The member for Scarborough, Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. It's um, a pleasure always to rise in the House and uh, to speak on behalf of my constituents in Scarborough, Guildwood. And um, to talk about uh, this budget that has been tabled and how harmful it is for the people of this province, Speaker, um, I'm, I'm very pleased to continue with this debate and to really point out to the government that while it talks um, about things that are not important to Ontarians, um, like vanity license plates, like gambling, alcohol, and all of those things that are repeatedly mentioned in the budget, that the things that do matter uh, are not focused on and, and they're not priorities for this government. Um, we all recognize that mentioning these items 63 times in the budget really demonstrates the government's priorities and its lack of priorities when it only mentions teachers 23 times, poverty zero times, and women shamefully just four times mentioned in a budget of this size speaker and the, the ford government is taking away from our children our students and our families in this budget and uh, and when we look at the numbers um, it's it's really quite shocking how deep the cuts go one billion dollars is being taken away from uh, the ministry of community and social services and, and that really speaks to our most vulnerable Ontarians. But I'm not surprised because they're not acknowledged in the narrative of this budget. Uh, they're not um, being given the due respect that they deserve. Uh, Speaker, this budget, as it is presented to the people of Ontario, takes Ontario back to an austerity state back to the 1996-1999 era, when we know how devastating those cuts were when they landed to frontline workers and to, um, and to, to services like hospitals, um, nurses, and teachers. We remember that chaos, and that's exactly what, uh, what is being presented to us right now in 2019. You know, the financial accountability officer tabled um, a commentary on February 14th of this year, and it does a, a pretty good job at analyzing Ontario's uh, program expenses and its revenues. And it really um, reminds us that Ontario receives um, less revenue per person than any other province in this country. It also, at the same time, spends less on programs per person than any other province in this country. When it comes to uh, an example that was provided, uh, health care, for instance, Ontario spends $3,903 per person on health care, and this is the lowest in Canada. It's $487 per person lower than the rest of the Canadian average. Yet, we have a budget presented to us that provides $1.7 billion in efficiencies coming out of our healthcare sector and projecting a year-over-year -year growth of just 1.6%, well below the rate of inflation, not keeping up with the realities of the demographic changes of an aging population and the um, the inflationary demands. So how, how is it that this government has the priorities? Not to mention, Madam Speaker, that the, the government uh, is combining, talk about bureaucracy, is combining uh, 20 agencies, healthcare providing agencies, into one massive monolithic bureaucracy that really what, what happens to frontline uh, health care workers? What happens to locally provided control and services? People in Ontario don't want all of their decisions made here at Queen's Park. They want local control and local decision making, and that is definitely not reflected in the direction of this government. Madam Speaker, I want to talk a little bit about um, the cuts that are being made to the, the Ministry of Community and Social Services, because those are some of, amongst the deepest cuts 
and and being done in a way that is hasty and and really with no input and we we see where that gets us we've just experienced that with the autism plan that was done in a hurry without input and uh, and really went nowhere in fact it just caused a bunch of crisis and um, and, and and issues for families I just spoke with a, a, a family today who you know I said to I said to her what would you have done if your program had not been extended for therapy for your child for six months, she said she has no idea because her her child is not able to go to school full time, and that was the only solution that these families were presented with uh, for the flawed autism program that is now apparently under review. So, Madam Speaker, when we look at what's coming for the Ministry of Community and Social Services, um, it's not a, it's not a it's not a good picture. In fact. Um, one billion dollars, where is it going to come from? Is it going to come from um, maybe the special diet program so that uh, people who uh, rely on on that um, that type of subsidy will no longer be able to purchase uh, fresh fruits and vegetables uh, to, to keep themselves healthy? Where is it really going to come from? Is it going to come from um, the actual amount that, um, that people receive through our Ontario Works and our ODSP program? I know that uh, Minister Fideli was asked that question directly uh, last Thursday, and he was completely unable to answer the question. And what, when, are the, when is this government going to um, be transparent and come clean with Ontarians and say, where is a billion dollars going to be found from this ministry? If I reflect back on 2018, um, we invested, uh, the former government invested $1.8 billion over three years to expand services for people living with developmental disabilities. And we were committed to supporting frontline um, workers in, and expanding funding to support the passport program and supporting people with developmental disabilities. What I hear now is that that passport program has been frozen. It has been frozen and people are waiting and waiting and waiting for access to that program, for access to the services that their child with developmental disabilities, their adult child with developmental disabilities has, and that program is now frozen under this government. In the Ford budget in 2019, there will be comprehensive reviews to identifying opportunities to streamline and improve coordination of provincial um, programs. And what that really means is that there will be a cut because we see that the expenses for MCSS has MCCS, MCSS has been uh, cut from 17 billion in 2018-19 to 16 billion by 2021-2022, and this is an average annual decrease of 2.1 percent per year. So this will come from social assistance, um, this will come from some of the, the most vulnerable individuals in the province who need that support. Now, um, oftentimes uh, the members on the opposite side say the best social program is a job. Well, what is this government doing to bridge people to those jobs and to that employment? What is the plan? How is this going to happen? Is this going to happen because you create efficiencies or because you create in so much pain and deprivation in our province that you believe that it's going to happen? Speaker, that is just callous and cruel and really short-sighted when it comes to providing real hope and real opportunity for the people of this province. Uh, we're all waiting for the definition of disability. When is that going to come? Is that going to be the mechanism where you screen people off of this as of right program so that they no longer qualify, they're no longer eligible, they're just tossed out? What is the plan? This is a huge cut and we cannot forget that MCS, uh, Ministry of Children and Social Services, uh, is looking after those Ontarians that are the most vulnerable and the most in need. 
I also want to talk a little bit about uh, our post-secondary education system, because when it comes to um, preparing Ontarians for the changes that are ahead, and we know that 40 percent of the jobs that we see today are going to face changes in the future due to just automation and the transformation that is happening in our workplaces. And over the next decade, what are we doing to prepare uh, reskilling, upskilling, and to prepare our workforce of the future? Here we have a government that is cutting services and supports at the primary level, the secondary level, and at the post-secondary level. How is this planning for Ontario's future? We know that investments that we make in the skills and the talents of the people of this province is our best defense. It's our sharpest way that we can prepare for that future, yet that's not happening. $700 million from this budget is being taken out of our post-secondary education system. $700 million. That's going to affect a lot of young people who, who are working hard. Our young people are working hard, and they're planning for their futures. They have so many goals and aspirations. Just um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, with the students say no at their protests and talking to them about what this means for them. And many of the students were concerned about what is ahead. They were wondering, should they even apply for the OSAP program? Will it be there for them? Or will they be saddled with just an insurmountable loan that uh, they cannot come out from once they graduate? Which, by the way, the interest will be applied on the first day. So there's no grace period for those young people whatsoever. So when we look when we look at the priorities of this government and whether or not um, they are in the right place, I would say they are not in the right place. Based on the budget that they've presented, based on all that we know, Ontario should be preparing right now for a slowdown in the economy, should that occur. Yet this government is doing no such thing. They're putting up billboards, changing license plates, and that is not a plan for the economy, Speaker. I want to, uh, to take a few minutes to talk about um, an area that, that I, I have significant concern around in terms of the cuts from last week's budget, and that is access to justice. And when we look at the decrease that is coming to the area of our justice um, system, it's moving from $5.6 billion to $4.7 billion in 2021-2022. So where are those cuts coming from? Those cuts are coming from access to our justice system, for people who need to access legal aid. In my constituency office, this is something that people need. This is a service that they rely on in the community. And without access to proper representation, our justice system slows down. In fact, it becomes a human rights issue. And so why is this government taking away resources and funding from our justice system? Um, it says that you're going to be modernizing our youth justice services and really it lauds the fact that youth crime rates uh, are the lowest that it has been in years. Well, the only reason why youth crime rates are low, it's because our graduation rates have increased from 68% in 2003 to 86.5%. So more young people are pursuing their futures and doing things that are on a positive basis versus not receiving the supports that they need. What's going to happen should this not continue under this government because of lack of funding and services and supports to things like our Focus on Youth program? that is working in priority communities across this province with school boards to support young people. Yet, we know that was one of the first cuts to our education budget, 
$25 million taken out of this program. I've, spoke, I've talked to young people who this, they've said to me directly that this program, Focus on Youth, has saved their lives, that it has given them the path to post-secondary education and to a future that they would otherwise not be able to access. Yet, it's working, so what happens? It's cut. Programs like our Systema Toronto program that's in my riding in scarborough guildwood in two very high needs area in the riding. I talk to those young people, and they are flourishing under this after-school-based program. Yet, one of the first things that the Ford government did was cut this program, no longer providing much-needed support and services to expand this to other communities so that other young people can benefit. And finally, with my time remaining, uh, I want to, to speak to the Indigenous uh, Affairs, which has actually experienced uh, one of the most severe cuts. So of the 25 uh, ministry areas, uh, 20 of them have seen a decline in this budget. So this is very, very much an austerity budget. When you have 20 ministry areas that see uh, a cut in their budget. But one of the deepest cuts is in our Indigenous Affairs um, Department. And, and I, I wonder what is the motivation for this? Does this government not uh, have a plan to respond to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's uh, report that was adopted by this legislature? Does this government not see the need to respond to the needs of both our urban Indigenous as well as Indigenous communities um, on reserve? What is the, what's the plan here? Because when you take half of the budget away, when you cut the Indigenous Culture Fund, which was providing remarkable results in terms of the response to the truth and reconciliation, when you stop the curriculum development that was Indigenous-led and, and basically ready to be incorporated across our school system so we do not repeat the mistakes and the errors of the past. And now, this is a big blow to Indigenous communities across this province that this ministry and this um, program area is seeing a 49% cut to its budget. Once again, the Ford government showing us its priorities. And I would say, Madam Speaker, that those priorities are in the wrong place. They are hasty, they are harmful, and they are providing um, a lack of vision and foresight for this province. And I believe that um, the, the government inherited from the former government a strong economy in Ontario, with strong GDP growth, with low unemployment, in fact, it's the lowest in four decades, and with the potential and the prospects to grow that economy. But it's squandering that with these hasty cuts to programs and services that people rely on. We can think of the basic income pilot uh, that was providing much needed um, support to 4,000 Ontarians and being uh, studied in detail so we can find new solutions for how to support and assist vulnerable people to help them to transition, that program was cut right away without any thought. We talk about the, uh, the cap and trade program, $1.7 billion out of revenues that was being used to invest in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and driving new technologies and new innovations so that we can have a carbon-free economy and a climate that is sustainable for our future. Where is the vision? Where is the foresight? All that I see here is the government under Premier Ford and his team is really taking away from Ontario's futures, from our children, from our families, and from students, and from our communities. And this is an absolute shame. You know, I talked about uh, this government recognizing that the headwinds 
uh, for our economy are challenging right now when we look at what's happening globally, when we look at what's happening south of the border. Ontario should be preparing for that. We should be preparing for that by making investments in the skills, in the talents of our people, rather than making reckless and hasty Thank cuts. You. Thank you, Madam Speaker.